heart of any rain catchment system is the rain barrel or the rain barrel system. All right, so stay with me today. We got an exciting topic. We are gonna talk about rain barrel systems, how to build them, what's important and what's not important. So first, make sure you like, subscribe, and uh, share with a friend. Join us on Patreon, lots of good stuff there. All right, so rain barrels, rain barrels. There's so many different ways to do this. Let's start off with some commercial rain barrels. You can just buy the rain barrels. A little bit expensive, but I wanna show you two styles right here. All right, so this is one commercial rain barrel here, and uh, uh, it's really a good solid unit. And uh, uh, one of the things that I wanna uh, share with you, just take a look up here. You get debris in here, all right? Uh, you get some type of debris in here. So you want to have some type of way to keep bio matter out of these barrels. That bio matter will degrade and uh, Mosquitoes will get in here and infest, and this one comes with a screen on the top. This is a very important feature. Now, some units, um, you'll see that people do not dump the water on the top. What they do is they tie directly in to the barrel, and that's fine. You still have to make sure that you protect um, the barrel from getting leaves and other debris and uh, bugs as well. So this is how this unit does it. They've got holes drilled in top and uh, they've got a screen all right so that's one of the very important parts of a rain barrel okay next one and the reason we're going over this is because you know what these are pricey okay it's best if you can build it yourself uh, you can save money you can uh, actually customize it if you want a little bit so uh, they all have the same features let's take a look at this down here you've got the valve and you're thinking oh my gosh why is this valve so high you know this one probably is a little bit high um, but you want to make sure your valve is not all the way at the bottom the reason with this uh, rainwater it collects sediment off your roof through your gutters and all that you want that stuff to settle out of your water you don't want that on your plants you don't want that if you're going to run this water for drinking water through a Berkey filter or some other filter. You don't want that stuff plugging up your filter. Let it settle out. So you got to clean it once uh, or twice a year. This one, we clean once a year as we go into winter. And uh, that's all it takes. And there is going to be plenty of sediment. And uh, that's not going to be a problem. It doesn't get into our water. All right. So we've got the water coming in. We've got the water going out. The other feature over here and that is the overflow you don't want to fill this up 100 percent you do want to make sure that you have some way that when this barrel is uh, full uh the water's got somewhere to go instead of just running all over the place so we run this right to the ground and it runs into the uh, natural drainage system those are the elements that we're going to have on any rain barrel system let's go take a look at another commercial unit All right, so this is another unit, and you've got your opening up on top, as you can see, and uh, the debris catches up on top, does not get in the water. It's kind of dirty here, but it's cleaner in here. Again, you've got your, uh, your spigot down here. Notice it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. Again, we're letting that sediment filter out or uh, settle out so that uh, um, it doesn't get in the water, get in the plants. And here's the overflow over here. A little bit different of a setup, it just uh, runs down the side. Now, this is not a problem for us uh, right here. However, I'm gonna show you a different way of doing that when we take a look at our system. Okay, so like I said, pretty expensive. This one looks like a barrel, it costs a lot of money. I wanna go back to this other one because there is an opportunity, because there's possibly an opportunity for you. This one did not cost anywhere near as much, probably, a third to a quarter of the cost of the other one. How is that possible? Well, we went through the local government, we went through the city where they subsidized rain barrels um, as part of a water conservation. So if you water your plant from the rain barrel with rain that comes off of your roof, that means you're not tapping into the city water system. So we got this subsidized um, like $30 for a $100 barrel um, very good price. Check with your local city or state 
they may have some program that will uh, subsidize you for pennies on the dollar. Um, real good deal. Those are basic commercial um, rain barrels. Very effective. A little on the pricey side, but notice they all have the same features. All right, so take a look at this. That's about 55 gallons. What if that is not enough? You want to tie some barrels together. All right, that's what we're doing today. And I'm going to show you what I have already done. And then I'm going to show you our newer uh, system that we are putting together right now. Let's head over here. Over here, I have four barrels tied together. And uh, same basic concept. Water comes in over here. And uh, I've got a screen mesh. We're going to talk about that over there. But we have to tie these together. And uh, let's go ahead around back. Let's go over here. And take a look at those hoses. What you can see is that these barrels are all connected together. So when you're filling up one, you are filling them all up. Okay, so um, very important. So as you can see, all four barrels are connected through the bottom. And uh, uh, that means I've got now 200 plus gallons of capacity from one uh, entry point. I could also add to the second entry point, but right now just this one is hooked up. Okay, there's a problem. There's a problem, and I have talked with people that could not figure out. If that's all I did was connect at the bottom, guess what? These other barrels would not fill up. They would not fill up. Why is that? Because I would have an air pocket in here. Look, there's no way for the air to escape. It would just build up pressure, and it would keep the water out. All right, now take a look over here. This is one way to solve that problem. I've got this hose here. So this hose is higher than the overflow. This is just for air. I got a little kink, doesn't matter because this is to equalize the air pressure. That's all there is. This is one way to do it. And uh, very important for us to make sure that the air here can go somewhere. Look at this, the air can go through this tube and out these holes. We are not gonna have an air pocket here. So we, we're gonna fill up all of these. Now, I've done it a little differently on the other side. But this is your basic water system. I've got my valve down here. I've got my overflow over here. And I'm tying in at the top and the bottom for these different barrels. All right, like I said, the next one we're doing a little differently. And I'm going to show you how to put all this together. And uh, we're going to do it on the other side. Let's go over and uh, do that. All right, here we are. You guys might have seen this. You recognize this beautiful enclosure from a different video. And I'm gonna have a link to this at the end if you wanna see how to build this beautiful enclosure and our beautiful rain diverters from a different video. And all this is tying together. We've done several videos, all gonna to tie together. All right, so four barrels here, four barrels. And I just, I left these two out um, partially incomplete because I wanna show you what I did, how I did things. Let's start over here. Two basic types of drums. You have got your open top and your bung top. This is called a bung, and that's your bung top. And a challenge with the bung top, let me head over here, is you need a special tool to open these, and that fits right in there and opens that. Now you can use a screwdriver and work really hard, and hopefully you don't stab yourself, but this goes in here and this tool just fits in here and you just turn it okay so that's a bung wrench uh it really helps with the uh with the uh, uh it really helps with the bungs okay so two different types and we incorporated both of them and uh, if we take a look at this one here we've got the valve and i want to show you here is the connection we are going to connect all the drums at the bottom. Take a look at this over here. We're going to connect these drums at the bottom. I'm going to leave this out because you know what? There's one that's still missing. And we're going to talk about how to do that. So let's talk about the, the bung top for just a moment. Many people go with those open tops because the bung creates some problems, particularly with putting the fittings at the bottom. We're going to uh, talk about how to do that. But some people like them because they can take the uh, gutter and run it right into the top here. If you take a look, nice round hole, easy to uh, find a fitting to do that. So there's advantages and disadvantages. 
I'm going to show you how to overcome that disadvantage. But let's take a look at this first. What I did here is I made my own filter, my own screen. You saw on the other barrels, they had a screen. What I took was some nylon um, screen door mesh, and I used some hot glue, and I glued that down. Now, I, we, we did this on the other one. Works very well, and uh, it uh, stands the uh, test of time. So I've, uh, I've actually added these uh, extra holes here uh, because the water collects in these ridges, and I don't want the water to collect. I want it to go in the barrel. Okay, so that is the lid. That's how we're going to get that water in. It's going to come out of the uh, gutter, land right on top, and it's going to fill in here. All right, so the other thing, this is my overflow. And I will hook a hose up to it, but call me paranoid. I hate bugs. Bugs hate me. It's a mutual thing. So if you take a look in here, I also went and hot glued a screen mesh over my overflow because I don't want any bugs to get in there. I hate bugs. Did I mention that already? I might have said that. I hate bugs. All right, so that's this barrel here. It has all the features. And one thing, if you take a look at these other two barrel lids, notice that they're painted black, right? Now take a look at this one. I will paint this black. The reason I paint this black is that I don't want the ultraviolet lights to break through and get into the water and feed that bacteria. I don't want green, nasty water. So I'm gonna block that out with some black paint. But I just wanted to show you guys what I'm doing so I didn't paint this one yet, but we're gonna paint that in a little bit. All right, that is this barrel. This barrel is gonna go here on the end. I have my two spigots on the ends here and my other containers in the middle. All right, now let me share with you what I'm doing differently on these uh, barrels for air equalization. You have to have the air equalization or you're gonna have air lock. That's what that's called when that air sits in the barrel and it has nowhere to go and it keeps that water out. So to prevent air lock, this is what we've done. On this barrel, it's designed a little differently. I've drilled a couple of holes and yes, put my uh, mesh over here and this will allow that air to equalize with the atmosphere. We will have no air lock here. If you take a look over here, I've done the same thing here. And again, got my screen mesh because we do not like bugs. So I got my screen mesh in here and I've got that around uh, all four corners. So we have done this. We're not going to have an air lock problem because we're gonna equalize with the atmosphere. Two different ways. We, we solved the problem one way over there and uh, we're solving it differently over here. All right. Now, before we tie everything together, we are missing one connection. All right, one connection. How do I get the fitting in there? All right, so what kind of fitting do I use? I'll tell you what, I struggled with figuring out uh, this fitting. And this is a bulkhead fitting. They come in different sizes. This is the particular size that I use here. And um, this is uh, what I've got. What I like about this is, let me get this other piece here. All right, what I like about this bulkhead fitting, this is the piece I'm gonna slip the hose over. So this piece here, so there's threads on the inside, threads on the outside, and look at that, it screws in beautifully. So that makes it real easy to attach to the barrel. That's what we're gonna use. But how do I get this in here? That's a challenge. Uh, you know, I need a skinny person. All right, Let's, that doesn't work. Okay, secret technique time. Secret technique. Take a string. Take something kind of heavy. Tie it a couple times. You don't want it to come loose because then you have a hassle trying to get that out. All right, I got that tied. Let's make sure... Uh, Okay, that's good. And I tied the other end, something that will not fit through the, the through the hole. Now let me go ahead and set these things off the side. I don't want these in the way. Let's get this out of the way here. And this is everything that I need right now. I also 
I have this handy grabber tool just in case. I haven't had to need, uh, need it yet. And I have my needle nose, we will use those. Okay, so I also add caulking. I like this quick seal uh, bath adhesive. It's a uh, kitchen bath and plumbing. It works a lot better than the plumbing tape. All right, so first of all, important where to, where to locate your holes. Notice I located these right opposite of this up here. Take a look, go straight up. All right, they are right over here. That is on purpose because we are gonna go in from this hole here. And uh, we're gonna, you're gonna see, I'm gonna let that drop down as I lean this forward. Now, some bung top drums have a large hole like this and a small hole uh, that's about like this. You want to make sure that the small hole is on the side of your fittings because we're going in on the far side over here. All right, let me set this down and uh, let's go ahead and do this. I drop this in on the far side. Okay. And I'm gonna lean this forward. And I put this hole right at the bottom. Look at that, look at that. The old man knows something here. I actually learned that from a young guy, so. <laughs> but uh, I uh, almost will take credit for that. All right, so I've got this out. Now I need to make sure that doesn't come loose. I'm gonna put this through here because I don't want that to go back in there and that will hold it. All right. Now, we're gonna unscrew this. Huh. All right, now we're gonna untie this. Very important, make sure this goes the right direction. I want this going out, okay? This piece here is gonna go out. This is gonna be the inside. The nice washer here, I've got the washer that is gonna go up tight up against the bulkhead, and I want that. So this string, this is gonna follow the string. Remember, the string goes out the hole so, whatever I want out the hole goes first. And I'm gonna drop this in. Look, that barely fits, barely fits. Woo! All right, now I'm gonna tie this back because I don't wanna to have to mess with this. I don't wanna lose it. And uh, let's see if I can do this. Let's just tie this back in place. If I had a second person, I'd have that person just hold it. But that second person is doing my videos. All right, so let's come over here. And look at this. Look at this. This thing comes right over here. And I can just grab this like this. Sometimes you got to work it a little bit. But I don't have to find it. You know, I should have filmed the first one because that went in perfect. But... Uh, you know, I'm not worried at all because it will go in. Sometimes I have to uh, screw it a little bit because this is actually a really tight fitting. This hole is very tight. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. The old man's got it. All right. So now I really don't think I need to seal this, but I'm going to. And look, at I'm just going to turn this around like this. I'm okay with it being a little on the sloppy side because I am paranoid of leaks. All right, now let's go ahead and untie this string here. And make sure we've got this right. There we go. That was a little hard work. Now I have something to hold on to. All right, so I had a little trouble with this one, so I had to tip it on the side to get leverage. Had to put the uh, piece in there temporarily. Now everything is golden, and we're getting this in here. We're gonna crank this baby down. And I'm gonna use my channel locks. You need big channel locks for this particular side. Okay, that's good. Now, 
yes I'm gonna clean all this nasty mess up but we're not done with this take this back out that was for leverage and let me uh, go ahead and put some sealant on this Okay, now we'll put this back in here. It's in the threads and that's pushing that sealant into all the threads. We're gonna tighten this baby down. Okay, that's it. This is ready. I need to put the bungs back on. couple of things remain. I need to paint that lid, so we're going to do that before I connect everything. And uh, then I need to tech and attach all the hoses. And um, we'll be done. So we're going to do that in a little bit. We're going to do that tomorrow. Oh, oh, one other bonus about using a bung. One other bonus. Companies make a level indicator, a gauge that you can screw into these bungs so that you don't have to keep lifting these lids to find out how much water's in there, I'm gonna get one. That's uh, why I went with this bung for this one. I almost forgot, very important to know whether you want to feed more water to it or not. So um, that's why I did this. All right, folks, we're back today. We are wrapping things up. One of the last things we have to do is connect the barrels. So take a look over here. We've got these barrels all connected. I wanted to show you how I did that. I've got this uh, tubing and uh, it's really actually quite rigid. It is so hard to get on these fittings. So what do we do? I've experimented with a couple of things. What I found that works is my wife's hair dryer. So what we're gonna do is warm up both ends and uh, make it very flexible. It's very, very tight right now. We're gonna soften this up. All right, feels a little softer. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. Hold the barrel so I don't push the barrel. Look at that, look at that, it slides right on all the way back. Let's do this other one. Holding the barrel, look at that. Oh my gosh, it's awesome. This is better than what I did before. Okay, this is awesome. Works great. We are almost done. Got to uh, got to put the lid on. Got to run the uh, gutters out here, and then we are done, ready for a rainstorm. All right, look at this, folks. Everything is done. Everything the the gutters and the uh, rain diverters and this nice, awesome cabinet, and uh, we have got uh, the rain barrels. The gutters are coming over here. The rain is set. Everything is so beautiful. We've got the drainage, the overflow drainage set, and everything is set. Everything except for one thing, one thing yet remains. All right, the last thing that remains is take a look. We are changing the diverter. We're ready to go. We're done. We are done. We just need rain. Awesome. All right, stay safe and stay prepared.